Acrylic is a very popular material to make fountain pens. As a raw material, as far as I can tell, it's not that expensive. Just what goes into making an acrylic pen with a steel nib and plastic feed that makes them so pricey? I'm also ignorant to what resin means, or macrolon, or anything else that the industry seems to advertise as anything other than plastic. Any insight into the material science and or manufacturing complexities that make these things worth it to aficionados would be great. Okay, Brian, I think I can help you out a little bit here. Yes, raw material is a factor, um, but it's not always just the, the raw cost of material that makes it so expensive. A lot of it has to do with the labor and the machining that's involved in working with that material. Um, you know, the, the resin is a pretty good example. I can talk to you a little bit. So, like, the reason that, that they don't just say plastic, first of all, plastic has you know, a lot of different meanings to a lot of different people. Most people, when they think of plastic, think of cheap. So that's why, from a marketing perspective, saying, I have this Edison plastic pen doesn't really make it sound super appealing, right? Um, but yes, it is a form of plastic. There's literally, uh, I don't want to give an exact number, I want to say hundreds if not thousands of variations, formulations of plastic. There's lots of different types of plastic out there. I may be wrong in the exact number. Uh, well, I didn't give an exact number, but I'm not a material scientist. I'm not a chemical engineer or anything like that. So please correct me if I'm wrong and way off base there. But there's basically, the idea is there's a ton of different types of plastic out there that have a variety of names and they all serve different purposes. The, what you uh, get typically from most fountain pens is acrylic acetate. That is the cast resin, what they call it. Resin is, is plastic. Resin is, is a form of plastic and it's just kind of a more of a general marketing term for plastic, okay? Just in general. Um, acrylic is another word you could use. Yeah, plastic. Precious resin, it's plastic. You know, so there's different, um, uh, you know, varieties of it. But in general, it's, it's all different forms of plastic. So why is this plastic any different than the plastic from, what do I have here? Uh, Pilot G2, right? $2 pen or whatever, and then $150 pen. What makes the difference? Aside from this is a rollerball fountain pen. Um, but this is an injection molded plastic. It's a different type of plastic. Um, and the way that they make these types of pens is they have these large molds that are made that cost anywhere between $100,000 and $250,000 to make one mold for injection molded uh, resin pens. And when you have these, your goal is high volume, low, low cost. So these molds are incredibly expensive. So pens like this, Platinum Preppy, things like that are very inexpensive because they produce them in huge quantities in these injection molded machines. So they take the cost of the mold and the machine to make them and they distribute that across many, 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 millions of pens, right? So the cost comes down quite a bit. When you're dealing with this type of resin, this is a, a cast resin, acrylic acetate, it's, it's not injection molded into a machine. You can see shows of like how it's made, that's, that show, there's a lot of cool things in there um, showing like some injection molding and stuff on various products. Um, but when you're dealing with a cast resin, the way that this works, is it is a, a mix, sort of more of like an epoxy. It's like mixed up and then it's spread out into a sheet and then it's let cure in a sheet form and then they cut it into rods and then they take those rods and they turn them one by one on a lathe to reveal the final pen form. It's a much more time consuming process. Uh, it's not just about the cost of the material. The cost of the material is higher. It's considerably higher proportionally than an injection mold, but it's more about the labor and the output and what you're able to actually produce. So making something out of cast resin is going to take you much more time than it would an injection mold. So what's the difference there? Why would that matter? Well, the plastic is a little bit different. You definitely get a little more uh, scratch resistance, a little more durability sometimes with uh, these uh, cast resins. It depends on how it's made and stuff like that. Um, but the main difference is the appearance. 
So uh, it has good stain resistant properties, but also the appearance you can get swirls, like deep pearlescent swirls, stark color variations. You can put pearlescent powders and things like that in it. You can get them to just look much more dramatic than you can with injection molding. That's, that's a lot of the reason why you go with acrylic acetate. So there's other variations too. You like the Noodler's pens, they're a different variation. Um, they're actually a variation of a celluloid. It's a cellulose material um, that is, is part of how it gets its distinctive smell, um, but it's, a little, it's even different than acrylic acetate is. So there's lots of different variations that can affect. The, the material cost is simply one aspect. So I have a variety of other pens here that I can touch on a little bit as to the pricing. Um, ebonite is another material that is used kind of traditionally in fountain pens, you know, especially in the early 1900s. It's a basically a hard rubber, like a vulcanized rubber. Um, and it has um, some nice properties to it. You know, it's uh, got a little bit more grip to it uh, because it's hygroscopic, so it uh, absorbs some of the moisture in your fingers as you write, so it's less fatiguing. Um, it's also very durable, and it has a, a unique smell to it, kind of a rubber smell. So there are some advantages there to ebonite, um, but this material is much more expensive. There's not that many companies that make ebonite. Uh, these days. Uh, I think there's maybe like literally like one or two companies that make ebonite these days. I could be wrong on that, but I don't, I don't believe it's very many just because there's not a lot of uses for it. The main use, I think, aside from pens, is in uh, pipes, in uh, pipe stems. Uh, so uh, that is... Um, that is another material. So you, usually you're going to see ebonite pens are much more expensive, mainly because the material is just so hard to come by. Uh, you got some other kind of specialized ones. You mentioned Macrolon. Macrolon is the material, it's, I believe it's a Lamy proprietary material. It's, it's a mix of fiberglass and resin. So you're going to get uh, uh, this kind of industrial look to it. It's got kind of this grayish black look. It's a brushed kind of thing. Um, but that's what's going on in Lamy 2000. Very, very durable, but it's unique to them. So it's not, you know, it's, it's really the only pen that has it that I'm aware of, so it's hard to say, like, if it's worth more than the whatever. They make a stainless steel Lamy 2002 that's twice the price. So there you go. Stainless steel itself is not necessarily that much more expensive than this, uh, but it's the machining cost that's much higher. Some other things, you've got like a blend of, um, you know, resin and celluloid. Um, like Visconti has theirs, they call it acryloid. Uh, Omos has it, they call it cotton resin. So it's kind of a hybrid blend between a resin plastic and a more organic celluloid material. Celluloid uh, is something that uh, is an older kind of uh, version of plastic. It was kind of, it kind of preceded modern plastics. Celluloid is still used in some pens today, but you're going to pay very much of a premium. Uh, the Delta Dolce Vita, the orange is kind of, you know, uh, very recognizable for a lot of pen folks. This is the oversized one, which is pretty massive. Uh, but that orange is a celluloid. You can get really interesting patterns in celluloid. It's very deep material. The feel of it, it's subtle, but it's different than just a typical resin. Um, it's a little bit smoother feel, and it's a natural material, so it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's kind of self-polishing in a way. Like as you rub it with your fingers over time, it kind of like works out its own fine scratches and stuff like that. So it's just kind of an interesting material. But celluloid itself, um, I've talked to you know, the folks at Delta about what it takes to actually make this material. It takes literally about one and a half to two years for the celluloid to cure. It's very flammable. In its, uh, in its manufacturing process. Um, and it is actually flammable. If you think about uh, nitrocellulose, the old like um, film, uh, like movie film that they used to do, it's a similar kind of you know, cellulose uh, that's used in these pens. So if you take an open flame to your celluloid pen, it will light on fire. So you don't want to do that. It's not like you have to worry about like a spark coming and blowing up your pen or anything like that. But um, especially in the manufacturing process, it's very toxic. It's very uh, hard to manufacture. And the cure time is just so long. So it's, it's very expensive to manufacture that particular material uh, and prepare it for use in a pen. Uh, a lot of the other uses for celluloid uh, are actually, I believe, in um, like expensive designer like eyeglass frames and things like that. So um, some other materials that I have. 
uh, the there's you know this uh, um, lava rock basically uh, that you have in the Visconti Homo sapiens. Um, it's not just straight up lava rock because lava rock is very very uh, uh, permeable, so water can work through it very easily. So they take and they pound it up and make it into a very fine powder, and then they've tested all different kinds of resins to cast it into. So it's it's you know it's very much the lava rock, but it's um, it's cast into a resin so that it doesn't basically leach ink out of the pen as you're trying to write with it. Um, so a lot of really you know good durability and things like that, but they literally have to like harvest this out of a active volcano, Mount Etna in Florence. Uh, they harvest that out of the volcano, pound it up, grind it up, cast it in a resin, turn it into the pen. Very expensive process. That's part of why the Homo sapiens costs so much. Uh, and then the last one, you know, there's, there's various metal pens as well. You know, Lamy All Star is a good example. You know, so you can get like aluminum, and you can get these can be a little more mass produced, kind of like the injection molded. Um, versus there are some some finer metals, you know, that you get into that can be, you know, like think about like David Oscarson or some of these like designer uh, brands. You know, the, some of the Mont Blanc pens and stuff like that. Even metal, you can get into some kind of very fancy metallurgy, if you will, uh, with pens that can affect the cost quite a bit. Um, and then, uh, you know. I'll, I'll top it off here with something like a uh, Makie or Urushi. Uh, you know, so these, uh, this is a rodden, uh, so it's basically uh, small bits of, of uh, mother pearl, abalone shell, that are put into, literally placed into here, and then cast with Urushi lacquer. Uh, this, the material cost is, you know, something, but it's the labor. It's the labor uh, and the craftsmanship that goes into it that makes this pen uh, a list price of $2,800. So, Yes, material cost factors in for sure, but usually it's the labor and what's involved in actually doing the manufacturing process that affects it more than just the material itself. So I think you can, as you're kind of shopping around and looking at the prices of pens, you can see you know, what you're going to generally pay for these materials. Yes, there tends to be some correlation between how much a raw material might cost and how much you end up costing for the end product, but it's usually more of a correlation of those raw materials that are more expensive are also more expensive to work with, which is why it's going to cost a lot more. So there you go.